Do you support buying land south of Lake Okeechobee? And if so, how would you work in Congress to make a land deal happen? Uh, that's a two-part question. It's a good question. Uh, interesting enough, an opposing paper, uh, paper had an article today that said buying land was not the solution. I've talked to experts who say that's not the solution. The solution is a combination of buying land and developing storage capacities on the land. According to some scientists, there's you can't buy enough land and you cannot revisit the uh, 100 years ago because there's phosphates in that property. So we should buy the land and Amendment 1 to the state constitution did give the state legislature the right uh, to uh, buy some of that land. So that could well be part of the overall solution. Uh, as you're aware, the Everglades Restoration Project was passed before I was in legislature in 2000. It was roughly a $7 billion project. It was supposed to be half state and half uh, federal. Uh, the state money was pretty much done over the, over the years. I started voting in 02, but all of us. I was, the, the environment is not a partisan issue by and large. It's, it's, it's something that everyone sort of agrees on, at least when you're talking about that. So the real question is how do you get it done? And you get it done in the federal legislature just like you had to do in the local legislature. We, we had a problem similar to this, not as bad by any means, a Lake Worth Lagoon and the North Fork of the Loxhatchee River. And the process, you start with your delegation. Uh, our delegation happened to be predominantly Democrats, but it included the time Joe Negron as a senator, Adam Hazder, Ellen, and we all decided this was so important that in a unified way, we had to sell this to the rest of the state. And that's a process of selling the appropriations, the leadership uh, people, et cetera, et cetera. In the federal government, as you're well aware, for many years there were a couple of senators, particularly one from Oklahoma, that just didn't want any part of funding this. The story is clear to me. This is a natural, national, natural resource. It, it is the obligation of the federal government, it seems to me, to fund either buying land or making their half of the uh, uh, restoration project. And it's got to be done in the same way. We, whoever's elected, has to be part of the Florida delegation. And of course, I have an advantage here because I've served with many of the Florida uh, delegation over the years in the legislature. But we as a delegation have to make the pitch nationally. Because every guy up there, all 435 or 535, has something they want. And sometimes you've got to figure out what is it they want that will help you get what you want. So it's more process. It's, it's, it's through the Appropriations Committee and it's through letting the story be told uh, that this is a resource that must be sustained it is not about waving bottled water showing what the bad thing is. I mean, everyone everyone knows what the problem is. The clue is to get to the solution. And the solution is obviously money, and then how you spend the money, but it's a process to get the money. It's not easy. The, the federal feds have to do it, but Amendment 1, I think more Amendment 1 money should have been spent on this issue, perhaps including pur purchasing that land. Mr. Mass. I think, number one, you and I took different things away from the article. I read the same article, and it wasn't that uh, buying the land south of Lake Okeechobee was not the solution. It was simply that there are hurdles that go along with any solution, and you find a way to overcome those hurdles. Uh, any of the solutions that we have going on as a part of uh, the Central Everglades Restoration Project or anything else, there are always hurdles that have to be overcome, and this was simply discussing some of those hurdles as well. I've been a big proponent of saying, you know, if you want to get somebody from this district to have a say so in moving the dial in this, whoever, whichever one of us may get elected, so one of us should buy, buy, basically be vying to get on the Committee of Transportation and Infrastructure. Transportation and Infrastructure at the congressional level handles so many agencies that are important to what we need to move the dial on here. They handle everything surrounding maritime, everything surrounding canals, they handle the EPA, they handle the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, they handle uh, hazardous material, material transportation, they handle the railroads. If you're somebody wanting to represent this district in the best possible way in Washington, D.C., vie to get on that district because it, it encompasses so much of what's so important to what's going on here. So I've been a proponent for moving the water south. Uh, you know, this is something that I studied up at Harvard. I had a minor in environmental studies and studied specifically watershed infrastructure. I think this is something that can be accomplished. Uh, it's something that I believe in, but I think if you want to have somebody here to help, 
have somebody that wants to get on the right committees because that's where you're going to be able to do the most good. And that's where I will do. I'll try to do everything I can to get placed on that committee because it's where I believe I, I can most help. Now, there are some other things mentioned uh, in that article, something that I also think is important having to do with the, the, the Committee of Transportation and Infrastructure. And that's this, you know, Florida is one of those states that gets absolutely robbed uh, the dollars that we send to Washington, D.C. via the 18.3 cents per, per gallon gas tax, the 24.3 cents per gallon diesel tax. And, and these are funds that should, uh, you know, these should be returned to the state because we're getting robbed on this. And they could be used for programs like this in order to offset some of these costs. And that's where, again, I think it's such an important place for somebody from here to uh, to find themselves. So that's how I intend to move the dial. Thank you. Mr. Cozell. Yeah, thank you. So uh, number one, we need to execute. CERT plan is in place. It's not being funded. I mean, at some point, you can't talk about it anymore. It's a question of executing, put up or shut up. So the federal government uh, has not put up. We need somebody that's going to lean hard and is going to bring to bear all of the resources that they have uh, and is going to fight with everything they've got to make it happen. Moving the water south has got to be uh, the, the core of the solution. There's no other way around it, really. Um, period. I'll fight for that with everything that I have. Number two, uh, one of the things that I believe very deeply as a conservative is I believe that state and local government can often do a better job than a federal bureaucracy can a thousand miles away. One of the things that I would like to see with respect to how we solve this problem in the big picture is how we can get Washington and some other areas out of the way, return more money from Washington to Florida so that we can reallocate it in ways that we see fit. Several things that I think we need to be doing, that I, I think in large part we could do better if we could get Washington out of our way. One is there's a lot of indications, and the science goes a lot of different ways in a lot of different contexts, but there are quite a few indications that septic tanks north of Lake Okeechobee are, are resulting in a large portion of the phosphate concentration that's entering the lake and causing the, the uh, contamination problem. That's an infrastructure issue. Getting the central part of the state on septic tanks is a key thing that we should be doing. That's not so much a federal function. That's about empowering the state and empower the locally, empowering the local communities to do that. Number two, we've seen a lot of innovative solutions for, at the state level that have been much more effective, uh, big picture, than what we expected at solving uh, the problems with our water contamination. Stormwater treatment areas have outperformed relative to what they were expected to perform in the beginning of this process. By several metrics, the Calkins Water Fund looks like it could be a model for really beginning to handle large volumes of water in a way that that won't replace the need to send it south but it will supplement it and it will increase uh, the uh, it will shorten the timeline for getting this problem solved so i'm a big believer that one of the things we need to be doing is reining in the federal bureaucracy that is taking so much away from us in the way of resources elsewhere returning it to the state so that we can can focus on core functions of government and then the third point in my mind is this at some level the question of how you solve any problem is how much political will are you going to commit to it. The river is an issue that I think we need to be very careful of. It is like an 80-20 issue. Everybody supports fixing the river. And every candidate knows that if they want to get elected, they have to say they're going to fix the river. So we have people that have moved here from other states, from other counties, that have showed up with no connection to this issue, with no connection to the community or, or to the water issue that's plaguing us, and they can do a very quick poll and determine that they need to talk about the river if they're going to fix it. But the real question is how hard is our representative going to push when they get up there? As a place that I grew up, as a place that will be my home for the rest of my life, uh, as the place that my baby girl is going to grow up and is going to learn to swim, this is an issue that is intimate and very personal to me. I was in the marine industry uh, years ago to get my start. When that water goes bad, we can't work. My employees can't work. I can't make money. Uh, I have felt the economic pinch. I have felt the pinch in terms of our quality of life. This is an issue that I will bring to bear every single ounce uh, of political leverage that I have to get fixed. And I think that has got to be a fundamental part of this. Everybody, no matter what party you're up, you, you are in, no matter what race you're running in, everybody knows they're supposed to say they care about the river. But saying it and doing it are two different things. We need somebody that is deeply invested in it because it's part of who they are. And that's me. Okay, Dr. Green. Well, we know there was a deal on the table for the acreage. We know the dollars were diverted. That was not good. Uh, we know what has to be done. We know we need to bring the water south for storage and cleaning. And uh, 
we know that it's more of a political problem really than a science problem. Now, I'm, I'm a scientist. I'm the only person here who understands you know, science. Uh, I've studied this issue. I understand it completely. From a scientific point of view, it's not that complex. So I came to the conclusion that this is really a political issue among opposing parties. Look, we're not gonna get anywhere by pointing fingers. You're only gonna polarize the people. They're gonna get angry, they're gonna walk away. And the proof of that is that's what's been going on. So uh, we need to you know, stop finger pointing and bring people to the table for compromise. Uh, I know that when Obama came down here, he didn't give a damn. He went and played golf. He didn't look at the water problem. Uh, the EPA has been delinquent. They give us a lot of trouble on a lot of stupid things. But when it comes to something important, where are they? Where were they in Flint, Michigan? That problem was known for years. They just ignored it because they only pay attention to the things they want to pay attention to. Now, if I'm elected, I will try like hell to get on the right committee. I will bring dollars back to Florida because I'm a relentless fighter. And I didn't get where I am today without being a relentless fighter.